Hello and welcome to Rob from the Internet Talks About Beer. A show where we talk about beer history, beer flavor profiles, we give shout outs to breweries we think make exceptional beer, and we talk about whatever else comes to mind during the course of our conversation. A uh, little note of housekeeping, if you like what I'm doing, if you appreciate the fact that I'm trying to mix a little bit of education with entertainment, you know, I'd appreciate it if you could click like and subscribe or possibly share this channel with your friends. I'm always trying to get a few more uh, few more people to uh, to follow me. Uh, the, the broader reach I can get, maybe the more people we can get to try craft beer. Uh, all right, without further ado, I'm Rob from the Internet. Let's talk about beer. Joining me today is a repeat guest. This is Gary Gilman. He's a friend of mine, and today we're going to be talking a little different than we typically do. Today we're going to be talking about pubs and what our ideal pub is and what we like to see in pubs and what we think uh, what we think are the best types of pubs. So, Gary, if you would, tell me and the viewers a little bit about yourself, how you got into craft beer, and what you do when you're not talking about craft beer. Thanks very much, Rob, and it's great, great to be on your show again. I really enjoy the show very much, and I've w watched a number of other episodes with, with your guests, and it's always really fascinating. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, you know, I ha I've been uh, following beer for decades, uh, studying it, um, traveling, tasting, meeting the like-minded at festivals and judging and being active on social media. I have a blog, beeretsec.com, if I may say beer, B-E-E-R-E-T-S-E-Q.com. I'm very active there and other publishing. And uh, yeah, and I'm retired now actually uh, from my, the, my day job, which was as a lawyer for many years in Toronto where I live. So that gives me more time to, even more time now to indulge this interest. But you know, my pub going has stretched over decades uh, in Montreal, Excellent. In Toronto and internationally. Yeah. He's a Jet setter and a gadfly when it comes to pubs, people. What, that's what that's Gary for you. What can I say? <laughs> All right. Well, I am I am going to be having a, a beer that I actually got from from Gary here. This is uh, from Pelforth. It's their Baroon, which is uh, supposed to be an English style brown ale. Although uh, you know it comes in at six and a half percent, which is about a percent higher than the typical English brown ale. But we're going to give her a go. What are you having tonight, Gary? Okay, great. Well, I've got Kronbacher uh, uh, Dark, uh, you know, from Germany. And uh, I just find, <laughs> oh, hey, you have one too. <laughs> that's that's and, my second beer. <laughs> wonderful. And uh, I've just got it at the right temperature and it tastes excellent. So uh, a little, you know, lightly roasty and uh, perfect dark beer, but for today. You know, and there's the Pelforth yeah. Brown. Wow. I hope yeah. you like it. Look at that. I hope you like it. Look at that. That 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 is a that is a damn fine looking beer. Unfortunately, I don't have oops, I don't have my uh nonic pint clean at the moment. It's actually in the dishwasher. So I'm okay. just using a I'm just using a um a tapered pint here, but look at that color, man. That that is that is a beautiful red brown with a nice uh nice tan colored uh, head on it. Not too much head, but it's got good retention. It's got a nice aroma to it. It's a, uh, it's kind of bready, yeah. A little bit, maybe a little bit nutty. Um, yeah. It, it's it's it, it smells really nice, and and uh, I'm gonna give it a moment here to breathe and and okay. uh, come the temperature up just a little bit because uh, okay. I I only pulled it out of the fridge about 15 minutes ago, so it's a little cool still. Um, I like I like my English style beers a little warmer. Uh, unlike unlike typical people who like to drink their beer really cold, I like to try and drink mine at the proper temperature. Yeah. Uh, and for people who are wondering what the proper temperature is for an English style brown ale, it's fifty to fifty five degrees Fahrenheit, which is what that is like about twelve and a half degrees uh, Celsius. Right. So. Um, and typically, like I said, it's served in a nonic pint. So that's your that's your uh, your pint glass that has that bulge in the middle. Um, for people who don't know, the, uh, the 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 purpose of that bulge is not for flavor or aroma or anything other than one keeping p drunk people from dropping glasses and two keeping the rim from getting chipped if it gets knocked over. <laughs> <laughs> All sounds reasonable. <laughs> Good. So uh, for people who who. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I'm sure I will. I mean, I like beer. So uh, for people who are interested in such things, uh, brown ales typically pair well with, uh, say, pork and steak and uh, nuts and things like that. Aged cheese, smoked Gouda, uh, 
Uh, you know, and if you're going more towards the sweet side, we're talking like uh, maybe apple or pear fritters would be a good thing to uh, to go with it. Um, you know, things like that. Comes in um, 12 to 17 SRM. That's the the color. So it's not overly dark, but it's not a light beer. Um, bitterness should be in between 15 and 30 IBU. So it's not going to be real bitter, but it will have a little bit of a bitterness to it. Uh, and it should have a little bit of bitterness towards the middle and a little on the finish. Uh, and alcohol typically, like I said, is uh, pretty low. Four to five and a half percent is typical. This one comes in at six and a half percent. I'm not going to complain because, as everyone knows, I really do like my big beers. So the bigger the beer, the better for me. Well, yeah, no, I think you pegged the uh, the uh, palate uh, quite well, as I recall it. Brewed in the far north of France, up in Lille, France, near the Belgian border, since the 1930s, in fact. So uh, I hope you like. That is that is that is quite lovely. Uh, according according to Beer Advocate, it's got a score of seventy nine, which uh, they call is just okay. I don't know uh, when you're approaching a eighty and above uh, on a beer. I think it goes beyond okay and goes into quite nice. Uh, I was just kind of looking things. I had to look up the uh, the alcohol content because it, it's not listed on the can. So I, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, and no, it's always good to to um, you know check the ratings. I always do that myself. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I form, a, you know, my own judgment finally. And, uh, um, you know, and uh, yeah, and, and having regard to the style as well. But um, I hope you like. Yeah. I yeah, no, it. it's it's quite it, it, it's it's quite lovely. Um, Great. I, I could I could see myself uh, partaking in this uh, quite often if I could get my hands on it. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. So let's talk pubs. Yeah. All right. So if right. if you were if you were able to wander into any place you wanted in the world and 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 there was a pub that you wanted to go to, what would your ideal pub be? Let's start with the outside. How would the outside of your ideal pub look, Gary? Okay. Well, I think it it should be uh, not too pretentious. Not too pretentious. I like. I tend to prefer plainer designs. You know, use of wood is nice. Uh, I'm not against glass and metal and modern materials, but uh, a traditional look of, of solid, honest wood, plaster, brick, you know, I, you can't go wrong with that for me. So uh, if I have my druthers, you know, those places I find always very appealing. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I do. I do enjoy. I do enjoy the uh, traditional uh, like English and Irish style pubs uh, that 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 kind of architecture from the outside but i do also really enjoy the ultra modern places like one of my favorite tap rooms i've ever been to is uh, surly brewing in uh, the twin cities in, in uh, minnesota they have a, a, an absolutely gorgeous ultra modern facility glass and steel and they've got like a water fountain out front and, and some statuary and stuff it's absolutely amazing and then you go inside and you know it uh, it follows suit it's uh it's got a really nice modern look to it and things like that but for me, uh, going into a pub, my favorite style of pub is your old school, traditional Irish or English style pub. You know, lower ceilings, dark wood, dim lighting, and and you know, just cozy atmosphere. So you you can have a conversation with people, and you can you can uh, you can you know basically just have a little corner of the world all to yourselves because it's the seating is 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 close and you know and intimate and, and things like that. No, I'm I'm with you on a lot of that for sure. It's it has a reassuring feel, but a bit, but a modern place can be nice too if it's done nicely, um, in an understated way, not too flashy. You know, then I then I can enjoy that as well. Um, you know, or to some extent, architecture is um, of its time and place, right? And that changes over time, like people's tastes in buildings. So I'm not overly exacting on that, but. Definitely the the uh, the nook uh, with the polished wood and the leather, the banquette, or the plush of the English pub. That's hard to beat. It it really is. And you know, a good a good uh, old school pub can really be the heart of a community as well. I mean, you know, it's it's a meeting place. It's it's where everyone gathers. It's it's where you, you you learn things about your neighbors and your friends that you wouldn't normally, you know, necessarily learn like at work or just out in out in the open air. Uh, it, it it always had like it always has this kind of uh, 
this kind of homey feeling to me anyway uh, a nice a nice old school pub and and you don't get me wrong you can get that at some of the newer ones but a lot of the the newer really ultra modern interiors for uh for tap rooms they kind of lose that and and it's uh it's 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 a lot of style but not as much of that um not as much as that substance, I guess. Uh, and that's not to say that there's not a place for it. Uh, it's just not my favorite thing. And, you know, it doesn't mean I won't go there and drink and enjoy the beer. It just means that if I had my choice, if there was an ultra modern place right next to a traditional like Irish or English style pub, I would probably gravitate towards the latter. <laughs> I, you know, I'm with you on that, you know, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe this gets into the other areas of what one likes or doesn't like about a pub. But, um, you know, if I have a choice, you know, if I if I know the beer is going to be interesting, if I, you know, feel good about the place otherwise, I'll always go for the traditional look first, if I have that choice. And, and in fact, one does, you know, in central Toronto, for example, there are a lot of places that offer that traditional ambience. I think Say What does um, with, the, you know, the cellar lined in real stone from the 19th century and lots of wood there. And there's some modern touches too, but, um, but that's just one example. There, there are many others as well. So, so in your, in your mind, what, uh, what detracts from, from, from a good pub? Well, I would say provided I'm happy with the beer rock, not too much, not too much because I put a big focus on the beer for, it's always first for me actually. If I'm really <clears throat> interested in what's on offer there, it, it might only be one beer, actually. But if I'm if I'm really attracted by that, I will tolerate a lot to get that. But in terms of things I, I don't like, um, not a big list, but I I don't like when music is too loud. And th this is coming from a decades long hard rock fan, uh, you know, and. I love, I love loud music or hip hop. It doesn't matter what style, but when it's too loud, I can't enjoy the drink. I can't focus on it. And, uh, and sometimes yeah, well, I have trouble chatting with people next to me. And that's, that, that's the biggest thing for me too, is if the music is too loud and you can't, you can't hold a conversation without feeling like you're yelling, uh, that, that, that is a detractor, did detractor for me. Um, you know, I, uh, I much prefer to have the music uh, lower, and and part of that is because I am partially deaf in one ear, so it is hard for me to focus on conversations if there's a lot of background. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I I find you know I find that if I can find a place that's a little quieter, a little more uh, a little more uh, low key, it, it, it you know for me uh, that that's kind of what I'm drawn to. But like you, if there's a an interesting beer or a beer that I really want. Um, it won't stop me from going any place, you know, I'll put up with, I'll put up with a lot. There's not like you, there's not a whole lot that, uh, that I don't, uh, well, let, let me rephrase that. There's not a whole lot that will keep me out of a pub if they have an interesting selection or an interesting beer of one type that I want. Um, I'll put up with a lot of inconvenience for, for a good beer. I think we're very similar, Rob, in that respect. Uh, you know, we're really core beer people and we focus a lot on the drink itself and and so I see it the same way. And I recognize, though, that the in the larger beer environment, there's people go to pubs for and bars for all kinds of reasons, you know, so they may mm -hmm. focus on on other things. But uh, being a very beer focused person, I, I'm not too dissuaded by other aspects that that I may not like as much. I did mention music, um, not too much else. If the seating is very uncomfortable, that can be off putting. If the seats are too hard for me, uh, you know, hard, dried out wood or um, you know, I'm just trying to think of example, or a good example, perhaps, in fact, I'm thinking of one pub in particular decades ago in Toronto, where I had this problem. Um, in the winter, it was too cold. It wasn't heated properly. And uh, I didn't go there very often because of that, even though I was very happy with, with the beer choice. Um, after 15 minutes, I started to feel that chill. And um, so, you know, if the temperature is too hot or too cold, um, that can put me off. Uh, not too much else, um, you know, within reason, I don't mind who the clientele, within reason. I mean, you know, everything's within reason, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, but uh, within reason, I, I, I will 
I can talk to lots of different kinds of people around me if I need to talk to them. I'm not particular about that. I don't care about the social level, if that's the right word. Um, so not too many other things would, would put me off. Food, no, I don't, because I don't often eat in pubs anyway. And uh, when I do, I'm satisfied usually with basic offerings, if it, if it comes to that. So that doesn't dissuade me. Not too much, because again, I really focus on the beer offerings. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same way. Uh, I am not opposed to good food at a pub, but I'm also not opposed to them having the only choice being a bag of chips or some pretzels or something like that. Me too. Just, you know, every once in a while you, you get a little peckish, you want a little something while, you, while you're drinking, or you need something to help, uh, just to help uh, cleanse your palate or whatever from whatever you are drinking. Uh, yeah, and, and again, I'm not real picky um, when it comes to that either. Uh, I'm I'm not real picky about uh, who I sit next next to in a pub. If 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 it's a crowded place, I can sit down and make friends with anybody. Uh, my wife my wife remarks about that quite often. We'll go to places and we'll sit down and I'll just start talking. I'll, I'll comment on what people get for beer and ask them what they're having and things like that. Strike up conversations and you know I have uh, I have I have uh, friends even if they're just uh, for the twenty thirty minutes I happen to be in that pub. So, <laughs> yeah, you know that makes sense to me. It really does. Um, so it really does come down to the beer and, uh, can I just elaborate a bit on, on that aspect of it? Like you go down any tangential road you want to my okay. friend. Okay. Thank you. Because that is such a focus as we've discussed. I think we share that. Um, I look for different things. I, I may be interested in often, I think in a broader range of the average craft beer person, perhaps I may be interested in a beer because it has some historical significance, you know, that I, I know about, even though it may not necessarily taste outstanding or today, you know, but I may seek that out uh, just to familiarize myself with that palate because I'm thinking of things from, from history, perhaps, you know. So sometimes it's like that. It often, it not often, but sometimes it, it will be a mass market. Um, for instance, when I, when I was in Europe, uh, not the latest trip, but uh, three years ago, before COVID, um, we had um, a chance to try, Carlsberg issued a, a historical revival, you know, using a yeast, a rare yeast that it was able to culture up again from bo old bottles in the plant that were found. So I looked for that and I did find it and it was really interesting. Was it a, an outstanding beer? No, I would say not, but the flavor was interesting. It was different than the current range I'm familiar with. and I. So I really got a kick out of that. So when I knew a certain pub had it, I think I online I saw that they listed it. I made a point to go there, you know, that kind of thing. But more typically, it'll be craft beer, usually, or some well-established, uh, might be a European beer or a Trappist or something that I have a particular reason to want to try. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I... Uh... I also like to seek out the uh, the strange and unusual beers if I can. Um, if I hear that some place has something like you're talking about a historical beer that they've revived, or or they've got some, uh, you know, they've got. I, I'm a, I'm a big sucker for uh, open air fermented wild uh, beers, wild okay. ales, and things like that. Okay. Because I love I love tasting what the local you know the, the local flora and fauna have created in in the beer. Um, right. So if if you if you had go someplace and they have like a cool ship at the top where where they've just got it all open and they allow the air and everything to go with open fermenters, uh, I'm a big sucker for that. Um, I'm a, I'm also a big sucker for any place that does barrel aged beers. Um, it doesn't matter what it is, barrel aged stouts, barrel aged. Like I had uh, I was at the Because Beer Fest uh, this past weekend, and I had a barrel aged Doppelbach. Uh, from from um, oh, I can't think of their name now. Uh, from a, a brewery and uh, over there, over by Port Dover, but I can't think of their name. Um, and it was absolutely fantastic. So it it still had all the qualities that you would expect from the Doppelbach, but it picked up so much more from the barrel aging, uh, and it came in at like thirteen and a half percent. But you would have never guessed it from from the uh, the flavor profile. It was not wow. overly astringent. It wasn't super boozy. But, uh, you know, it, it's what I like to call a stand-up beer. You drink it, and you stand up, and you have to sit right back down. <laughs> uh, no, that's, that, that describes a good experience. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's right. And uh, now sometimes, one thing I would say, I think, on this subject is there's the class of, of pub 
that is kind of different in a way, in the sense that, for instance, a tap room. So that for the tap room, being part of a brewery, you know they're going to offer a choice of their current brewings. You may have been there before or not. Um, you may not be looking for one specific thing, but you know that there will be enough of a range. You know, presumably it's a place that's been around for a little while um, that you'll find something interesting. So that's another way to do this if it is a tap room. You know, especially in another city, the ones I'm not familiar with, um, and I've experienced this in Europe as well. So in that situation, I think I'm a little less focused on on the specifics of what's on the list as long as I know. You know, they have a, a reasonable range. If they only make one or two products and I, I, a sour, let's say, or something else that I wouldn't normally drink, well, that, that might be different. But usually they make enough of a range, right? The craft brewers around the world today that, um, yeah, you, you know, I'll, I'll enjoy and I'll learn about, about their house approach to brewing in general, you know, and maybe look around. And, so that's a, that's a different pub experience, I guess. Um, but the tap room situation... Yeah, oh, and I enjoy a good tap room as well. Um, I do not hold tap rooms to the same um, criteria that I that I hold pubs to either, because a craft uh, a tap room is part of a craft brewing uh, place. You know, it's part of a working brewery for the for the most part. So there's going to be a different experience. You're going to have different sounds. You're going to have different uh, atmosphere completely because you know, like. Um, for example, uh, my wife and I went to Railway City Brewing uh, here in Ontario, and uh, and you know their tap room is literally just just some chairs and a table and a bar in the middle of their brewing space. Yeah. So there's people walking around with hoses, and there's people actually brewing the beer, and they, and they're like the same for Clifford Brewing in uh, Hamilton. Hmm. You know their tap room literally you can look over and you can watch them brewing beer because it's all just one big open room. So right. it's a it's a whole different set of expectations and. I love I love when a tap room is in the working part of a brewery where it's not just, you know, the the brewery is squirreled away behind walls and you don't see it. I like it when it's right there out in the open and you can see everything that's going on. And like I was at uh, I was at Clifford yesterday. Um I went there to pick up some beers and talk to Brad, uh, the owner, uh and uh they were brewing um uh Crusher, uh which is one of their one of their their uh lighter beers. Yeah. And you know, it it was, I don't know, probably 40 degrees in the place because, you know, it was super hot yesterday outside and they're in there brewing. But it smelled absolutely divine when you walk in. You get that malty tea kind of, you know, essence going on. And, you know, it was great. And and I love that. I, so like I said, I hold tap rooms to a completely different standard than I do pubs. As long as the beer is good, you know. Right. Um, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you a pass on on bad beer, even if you have a cool tap room. <laughs> yeah. No, and I agree with you on that. But you know, I think one of the advantages of being at this stage of craft beer evolution is that all things equal, usually the experience will be pretty good. Like if it was, I have not been to Railway City. Is it Railway? What's the yep. name of Railway City? Is it St. Thomas in St. Thomas? Is it that um, I think no, so. no. This was. Uh, I can't. I can't remember the town. It was funny. We were coming back from the United States. Uh, we were visiting my friends and family because I'm originally from the states, and we saw a sign on the uh, what was it? The 402, the one coming out of Sarnia, that said Railway City Brewing. You know, and so we got off. We're like, oh, it's probably not that far. You know, it was like an hour and a half down the road. Okay. Um, <laughs> It's yeah. out in the middle of nowhere, uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, in in terms of uh, cities and things like that. But it was nice. It was a nice facility, and they make, and they make good beer. It's you know it's available in the beer store in the LCBO and things like that. Okay, see, so that's a good example. I too would visit unhesitatingly if I had the chance there. I've not been there. I have been to Clifford, but not there. But I would go because they've been around for a few years. Um, I have had one or two of their beers at LCBO, like you mentioned. And um, and had a good experience, so I wouldn't hesitate to to do that, and I wouldn't be as exacting again about you know what's on the current list and and uh, and the amenities, you know, frankly, because as you said, yep. off it's quite stripped down. Um, I think the good part of it is that you of, of the tap room experience. I feel this way about Amsterdam uh, Brewing Company in Toronto, is that you're so you know, which like some of the others you mentioned, is, is so directly placed into the the brewery, the, the, the clattering day-to-day, work-a-day actions of the brewery that you couldn't get more close to 
the beer making process, you know, and that's really very satisfying, isn't it? To it to is, it really is, and it's in its home, natural home, and and often it tastes better there too. I think so. Yeah, so yeah, you know, it's it, it's always great to uh, to be able to watch the process too. I mean, you'll see them taking raw ingredients, all the grain and everything, dumping it into to the vessels and and starting the process. And then if you're there long enough, you start to smell it and you're like, wow, so this is, you know, this, sure. this is beer. <laughs> yeah, the cooking mold, the hops often. And uh, yeah, so uh, so that's a different kind of experience, I think, and a, and a very valuable one because tap rooms, as you know, are kind of relatively new. I mean, they always existed, I think, in some form or other. Um, and I think... And maybe I'm wrong, or maybe it depends on the area too. You know, the and the laws in, in yeah. the area. But I think some some of them always had a some craft brewers always had the the possibility to taste beer there. But the way they've evolved, at least in Toronto, I find very very attractive. You know, so particularly for a brewery that I haven't been to or haven't been to in a long time. So I'll go without question. Right. But a pub, I'll be more you know, careful about deciding where I go. Um, yeah, a little more discerning when it comes to pubs as opposed to tap rooms. That's yeah. right. And sometimes yeah, I, I, I'm the same way. Okay. Sometimes it will simply be because I haven't been there in a long time and I want to revisit and see what's changed, what's not. Yep. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I totally I totally get that. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> speaking of pubs and, and tap rooms and, and – uh, I have, a, I, I have a friend in the States who owns, who owns a bar, uh, well, owns a brewery and a, a, it's a brew pub in the, the Milwaukee area. And one of the things that he brought back that I absolutely love and, and I absolutely loved when my wife and I were over in the UK was uh, the beer engine. So okay. he, he often he often has beers uh, on cask that, that he has, you know, you have to pump up from uh, and his brewery is two, two levels. So the brewing equipment is all in the, the, the lower level and the, the tap room and and restaurant is on the upper level. So they actually have to like pump it a few times to get it to come up from the basement and, and it goes through the sparkler and the whole bit. I love, I love the old, the old, uh, the, the beer engine as opposed to a forced carbonation system uh, uh -huh. for, for dispensing. Right. Uh, and I think it adds, it, it adds, not only does it add to the ambiance of, of the, the place you're at, it, it adds to the experience of having the beer, in my opinion. No, for sure. I was, uh, in England, very recently, of course, we have hand pump dispense in lots of places here now, too. So I don't limit it to Britain. But I happened to be there just on a connecting flight and had a, had a hand pump uh, uh, real ale uh, uh, in uh, Terminal 4, uh, Heathrow, uh, Weatherspoons, and it was great. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's now you I understand you're setting up a fairly sophisticated home brewing uh, kit in your home. And once you, once you get that operational, wouldn't it be possible for you to set up a hand pump system? Couldn't you do that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, that, is, that has already been discussed. So uh, my house, uh, for, for people who might be wondering, my house is a, uh, a mid-century prairie style home inspired type house. So it's... Um, the, it's got a full basement, but it also has two crawl spaces, one of which happens to butt up against the space where my brewing uh, equipment is going to be and where I have my cooler for my taps and things like that. So, yes, it has been discussed that um, that that crawl space might have a, a section of it uh, cordoned off for casks, and we might put in a beer engine or two so that we can have cask-style ales here at home. Yes. <laughs> that, would, that would be great, you know. Yeah, Definitely. it would be absolutely fantastic to walk in and just pump pump a few times and get it get a good beer and and uh, walk walk out to the backyard and you know throw a few burger, burgers on the grill and <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's obviously one of those you know one of those means of of getting the pint out of the cask that is pretty traditional and and brings us all closer to the origins of of beer of draft beer of the draft beer experience. Yep. I mean, obviously, as you know, uh, you can tap the keg in a traditional way w without that, just literally from the, from the, the faucet, uh, the thumb taps, I think they still call it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you can it, do that. Yep, you can, uh, gravity. Yeah. You can, you, 
gravity fed uh yep and just uh ha- have a uh have a pressure release valve in the bung and away you go yeah some german beer i think is still dispensed that way yeah i was at um oh where was i at oh i can't remember where it was it wasn't it, last year i happened to go into uh a, a, a tap room to pick up some beer and they happened to have uh, they were doing a cask ale thing and they had it on on the uh, the wooden slats, you know, is where it's where it's propped at a slight angle with the with the thumb screw tap, and and it was yeah oh yeah well, of course I'm going to try that of course it, it it's cask ale beer, <laughs> you know so uh, and and Clifford actually does quite a few cask ales. Um, they do their uh, their Dark Streets of London, which is their ESB. They do that uh, cask aged, and they also do their uh, English Mild, the Brave Captain. Uh, they do that one quite okay. often. Uh, okay. Cask aged. Is it usually on hand pump? that those uh no be- it's uh it, it it's it's uh it, it's it's uh like i don't know how they're how they how they serve the the cask i don't know if they even serve the cascade stuff in the tap room but uh you can buy it and they they package it in um uh, a box um kind of like uh, the boxed wine how it's in the uh the okay. bladder system yeah. like a so you can bladder. buy it to go okay yeah yeah and Okay. It's it, it's great. It's like a four four liter box uh, of cask aged beer. You take it home, and you know you drink way too much of it because it's got less carbonation, and it's way too easy to drink. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I know some of the brew pubs around town used to put a a keg. Uh, well, that's not the right word because, as you know, technically that means pasteurized, filtered. Well, n- not necessarily pasteurized, but often filtered, chilled beer. So that's not the right word. But a cask. Uh, right on the counter, on the bar counter, um, sometimes on a Thursday yep. night, Rob, right, or Friday night. The Granite used to do this. Uh, they have a great cast condition lineup all the time, of course, on hand pump. But as I recall, they used to sometimes put the, maybe they still do um, on some nights, the the keg, the cask right on the uh, bar counter. And, uh, and that's a nice thing, you know, especially if you wander in and you don't expect to see it. And uh, yeah, yeah, and, it's always a fantastic surprise. Yeah, it is. It's fun. And they and pour it by gravity. And sometimes you really get a great experience in the beer itself that way. So, uh, yeah, all those experiences are great. And I guess those are more associated with the tap room, with the with the uh, the brew pub uh, f- format rather than the standalone bar. Although the standalone bar can often really do um, cask very well. Uh, for instance, say what again in Toronto with its four or five regular offerings of cast conditioned beers on the hand pump, just because they've set themselves up to do that for so many years and they do it really nicely. So that's another option. But but I'm not necessarily wedded to cask. Um, I I respect and admire it, but there's other ways to enjoy a pint too. So you know. It's, oh, uh, there there are many ways to enjoy. Many ways, many ways, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and and beer. You know, the British, understandably, or camera, their lobby for real ale is very very wedded to cask, and I I understand that, but it's it's one part of the of a big beer world. It doesn't define draft beer for me. Oh yeah, just just like there are there are multiple personalities throughout the world, there are multiple types of of beers and multiple ways to enjoy those beers. That's it. Don't. Uh, don't 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 get yourself locked into any one one particular thing. I mean, I enjoy beer in all different forms. Give it to me cask aged. Give it to me off tap. Give it to me in a bottle in a can, yeah, barrel aged. I agree. You know? However, right out of, right out of the fermenter as a raw taste, give it to me. I, I like it all. <laughs> I'm I'm the same, and I I focus. I think what I've learned is that the the um, recipe itself, if the beer is fundamentally good, you know, well-flavored, a, a good approach to the brewing, everything in balance. Um, I don't think it really matters if it's more or less filtered or more or less cold or uh, casket uh, dispensed or not. You know, I think that it can stand up to different kinds of, of treatment and, and dispense. If the beer is very dicey to begin with, well, you know, maybe on cask when it's warmer, generally serve warmer it'll be more palatable but that doesn't won't make it a really good beer you know right yeah i i've always said that a good beer is a good beer no matter how you have it if it's cold if it's warm if it's in the proper glassware if it's in a solo cup it doesn't matter no, a good right. beer is a good beer yeah 
You know, uh, it might not be the best experience that you have with that beer if it's not served at the proper temperature and in the proper glassware. But if it's a good beer, it's still going to be a damn good. That's beer. right. That's <laughs> right. And and it can be room temperature. And, you know, you know, generally yep. right away. No, I, you know, I'm with you on that for sure. Yeah. All right, Gary, we have been talking for 35 minutes. So this is the part where I say, hey, this is the end of the show. Okay. Um, it, you, you know, uh, tell people where they can find you again in case they want to uh, follow yeah, up on your hijinks. Thanks for that. Um, yeah. So my my main uh, uh, pre uh, web presence is my website, and it's beeretsec.com. Uh, so, again, it's B-E-E-R-E-T. -E -E S-E-Q, beer at sec.com. At sec just means like et cetera, beer, et cetera. Everything that follows from the, the beer experience, travel, food sometimes, maybe a shot of whiskey, uh, you know, things that kind of connect to the enjoyment of beer. And, uh, and I publish quite regularly there. So uh, yeah, thanks for the chance to mention that. And, uh, and I'm on Twitter, uh, beer at sec. Again, the same word uh, uh, is my name on Twitter, quite active there as well. So uh, yeah, um, that's, uh, that's where I'm at. And uh, I do some other publishing too, but um, anybody interested can look, I think those references up and they'll see a lot of what I'm about. Yeah. yeah, no, and and that's actually uh, that's that that's actually how uh, we met was on Twitter. Um, that's right. I, I made a couple comments. I made a couple comments on a few of your posts uh, because I, I I am into beer history and things like that. And you post some really interesting articles and some really interesting factoids that things that I didn't know. It, it was it was pretty damn cool. Um, for those who don't know, I'm I'm Rob from the internet, and that is uh, that 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 is how you find me. So uh, on Twitter, it's Rob from Internet on. Uh, Instagram, it's Rob from the Internet. And uh, here on YouTube, obviously, it's Rob from the Internet. Yeah. All right. Until next time, though, uh, cheers. Cheers, Rob. Great to talk to you. All the best. Bye-bye now. <laughs>